for Blue Day. Tomorrow, tomorrow, there's an afternoon of Music Hall at the Deco in Northampton Town Centre. Max Miller comes to town. There'll never be another lady. There'll never be another. Max will be brought back to life. Bye. Tony House. Yes, I like the girls that do, I like the girls that don't. I hate the girls that say they will, though they say they won't. The girl I like the best of all, I'm sure you'll say I'm right, is a girl who says she never does. She looks as though she might. <laughs> hey, lady. How are you, lovely Bernie? It's, back from Edinburgh Festival, the great Bernie Keats. Is we that from the Blue Book or from the Red Book? That That's one? the Blue Book. From yes, the one from the White Book. <laughs> Adam and Eve in the Garden Twelt. They were so happy and jolly. I wonder how they would have felt if all the leaves were made of holly. <laughs> oh, painful. Now, you don't need a theatre. We had an email <laughs> a few weeks back from a, a listener who you entertained at a car wash. She only asked you how you were. Well, no, uh, that, it's that Romanian one, the in and out. You know the one I mean, don't Well, they, they wouldn't they... have understood a word you were saying. Well, I started full juggling. I, I juggle my balls, matron. <laughs> oh, no. And I've got my juggling clubs out, got a red nose on, and said a bit of a giggle, because they, they don't speak the best English. No. They're, lovely, they're lovely lads, but about 50,000 people to wash your car for £2.50. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> but they're lovely people. And I went up there and started doing a bit of magic, because I've got a pen trick and make a pen disappear. Had you, you taken your car up to be clean? Yeah, but I took all my stuff out, and there'll be clown costumes on the back, and there'll be juggling clubs. So I started doing a bit of an act, and did them all a balloon each, and I didn't know what was going on. Do you want a giraffe and elephant? That I... <laughs> <laughs> well, I got my car... We've been through so quickly. Car wash at the car wash, they baby. They you were mad. Oh, they do think I'm they mad. I think I've got more eccentric. <laughs> so yeah. tell me how you know Max Miller, because as we move yeah. further from his lifetime, which ended when mine started in 1963, he's becoming less familiar with people. He is, actually. But this, this audience that we have is the older generation, which is fantastic. Um, uh, they do the deco every month. They do, they do a musical. A musical. And, and it's with... There's a meal afterwards as well. Yeah, afternoon tea, 15, don't you? Afternoon tea, very pleasant. But Max Miller for me, um, in I was at the college here, the Northampton College, many years ago, with a lovely girl called Sally George, who was my drama teacher. 1988, I was in London in a kids program called Cops and Co. Lift Off, where I played lots of funny characters, and she was doing a Gerald Scarf. You remember the yeah, was, was doing too, a, yeah. Yeah, a 40 minutes documentary on Max Miller. And they had Max Wall in it. Wall's the name. My farm was the last brick of China. I said brick, that one. And they wanted me to do Max Miller. And it was called I Like the Girls That Do, funny yeah. enough. Yeah. And it's still on, if you go on iPlay, you can find it. Yeah. It's a 40-minute documentary. And I played the young Max Miller. And the old guy, you know, yeah, I'm not saying the wife's ugly. I'm not saying the wife's ugly, but I'd rather take her with me than kiss her goodbye. There's a lot of great material, but the thing about him He's was... not PC now. No, he was cheeky. Authorities had trouble with him back then, yeah. the nature of his act, that is very tame by today's standards. Oh, it is, actually. The I mean, rude stuff. I mean, there is stuff that isn't PC. There's stuff that, yeah, you know, some club comics do that we don't think is now no, acceptable, absolutely. you know? absolutely. Um, but this was stuff that he did in the 30s, 40s, 50s and 60s when he passed away. He played up to the fact that he couldn't be handled by authority. They couldn't cope with him. No. He played up to that, didn't he? And he liked it. It was innuendo, wasn't it, really? It's no different to Kenneth Williams. Innuendo, that that's stuff. Italian for suppository. You know that, don't you? <laughs> you do know I that. I said, doctor, doctor, you, you've got a suppository behind your ear. He says, oh, dear, some bum's got my pencil. No, that's no, the, no. Oh, sorry, that's the old Surely game, not. Sorry. Surely <laughs> not. <laughs> but anyway, no, no, I didn't know that. But anyway, the innuendo no, was not messing about. So but... have you got the suit? Have you got Max's I've suit? Got, well, no, I've got, I just got, I do like a... Pastiche, okay. I think the word would be, like yeah. a spotty dotty one. That yeah, I've got. yeah, yeah. Because I've got... it was, obviously, if he did make it to TV, and he made it to TV very rarely, it was all black and white. That's but right. A bit like watching uh, Alma, Alma Cogan in the 50s and 60s, you knew it was colourful just because of the kind of uh, um, uh, the, the, the garishness of, of his outfit. You knew that that was a million colours on that suit, didn't you? That's right. And uh, that, you know, he used to say, you've got to have a gimmick, lady, you've got to have a gimmick. He never actually sort of said why. <laughs> and he'd come on sometimes dressed as a soldier. Yeah. And he never make any reference to it. You've got to have a gimmick and walk off. Yeah. He was a brilliant. And the footlights is what it was he's famous for, doing the footlights. Just where, you know, when you're in Edinburgh, where the lights were, you've got to go over the... Yeah, he broke the fourth wall, didn't he? That's he did break the fourth wall. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm just trying to think of one of the gags that I'm doing. One of his, He said, that's, there's a little mouse. A little mouse goes in a music shop. He said, have a mouse organ, a mouse organ. The man said, funny you should say that. We had a lady mouse come in here yesterday. She wanted a mouse organ. He says, I know that is. He said, who's that then? He said, that's harmonica. You see, this is the roots harmonica. of these jokes. I've done these jokes a oh, hundred times. Yourself, yeah. But the roots are Max Miller. 
Oh, they are, yeah. I mean, I had it then. I so my hamster died. He fell asleep at the wheel. <laughs> so I do a modern version. My other that's, hamster that's died. That's modern, is it, love? That's well, modern. Well, it's pants Oh, that's, yes, it that's is. That's got cobwebs on it's, it. <laughs> it's behind me, like my career. I was in Emmerdale. No, your career's going great. <laughs> it you're, is, actually. You're in The Crown. I'm in The Crown as which well. Which is the most expensive TV programme ever made. It to actually get, was. Did you get to see any of that money? No, I, I got... I got paid well for two Good days. For you. If I'd been in it for, for for six months, it would have been nice. It's the second season, uh, what we call series, on this yes. side of the Atlantic, and it's on Netflix. Isn't Netflix. It? And your character yeah. in there? Where are you in there? Well, I'm just sort of playing a comedy jester, That's but great. I thought so I got a little bit really. But with the Queen Mother, that lovely actri- actress called Victoria Hamilton who's now in that Dr Foster at the moment. Do you watch that? Yeah, of course I've watched that. Very good. She's in that, playing the neighbour. Yeah, she's very good. Very nice as well. You know, very nice person. Do you like the company of actors? I mean, this is your profession. Yeah. I sometimes well, look at you and I think, it's a hard life, the acting world, you know? It's like footballers. Um, it's a handful who are David Beckham and Ryan Giggs and that kind. That's a right. lot of people are like jobbing footballers and it's a tough world. You're right. And uh, for acting, yeah. it's the same. But it's the life you've chosen, it's the life that you wanted. So do you enjoy the company of actors? I do. And I've got to be honest, that when I was at Bristol Old Vic Theatre School, National Youth Theatre, a lot of my friends, as you know, without my name drop, Colin Firth, Hugh Bonneville, my friend Michael Hobbs, who's by my level. Hang on one moment, let me just exactly. down pick that one, Pick that one up, love. There we go. But I mean, I was at drama school with all these lovely... And they're still friends, Nathaniel Parker. You know, they're doing quite well on television. They turn up and things. I'm more of a jobbing actor now. Yeah. I think my career, really, I was very lucky when I was young with Adrian Mole and being on television, on kids' television in the 80s, 90s. So yeah. I'm just happy now just to tick on in the odd episode well, of things. You're a great kids entertainer because there's something childlike about you. Oh, I, I love think. that. And Panto is your thing. And it's Portsmouth this year? Portsmouth, thank you very much. What it are you is. doing in Portsmouth? I'm playing Wishy Washy. Aladdin, yeah? Yeah, the, yeah. Miss Sosai, the seashell shifter from South Sea, <laughs> shopped and shattered that one. Yeah, I'm doing that old sausage. So it's quite fun. You know, I, 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 love, I love it. You know, I've got a film coming out soon. One Man and His Dog. I'm playing the lead, boys and girls, all that. But I'll be honest, I didn't. I went into kids' television, I think, Bernie. In my career, once you set yourself up, like you do in the radio, you still do your stand up comedy. People see you as a radio, it's hard to break. Once you've done, and you can do both. Well, what's I so can funny is that um, the reviews that I got for Edinburgh, and I haven't read any of them, but people have told me, you know. Um, it was all the fact that they were judging me by my radio work, even though up there they didn't know my no, radio exactly. work, but they knew that I was a disc jockey. So if you're a disc jockey in local radio, you have a certain image. I found this. I was told I was a bit like Dudley Moore. I can do Dudley Moore, and I love Dudley Moore, but I'm not Dudley Moore no. Tony Howes. And what I do is original. I'm not saying I'm not influenced by Freddie Starr, a lot of comics, mm. you know, probably Michael McIntyre, whatever these days. You follow Joe Pasquale, you know, and give it a Joe. I try and do... You know, you, you have your favourite comics, Frank Spencer's back. But it is know. strange how you're pigeonholed, isn't it, by something that they you do. They don't want you to be original. You're Bernie Keith, I'm Tony Howes, and we are what we are. But they want to say, you look like this, or you're even on Britain's Got Talent, they say you're this or you're that. Does that make sense? Yeah. But it's hard to be an individual. And then they want to pocket you. And it's difficult, because... When I went to drama school, as you know, I do the Shakespeare. Yeah. I do Chekhov. You're directing Shakespeare, aren't you now? I do. Yeah, I've just directed Shakespeare. Correct. Yeah, I'm with the Italian Shakespeare see, Company. See, Tony always looks surprised. You, I but know. I don't know. I you know all these things. He brings in a little piece of paper. So, Bernie, this is your information. I said, love. <laughs> I've researched. I know it all. You are so brilliant. You have done a course, haven't you? You've, do, I you've have, done I've been Romeo doing... and Juliet. Yeah, I've been doing Romeo and Juliet. That's the one. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun. And what you like as a director? Well, I'm fun. But I always get... There's a lot of meat on the bone, I always think. That's what I say to actors. There's a lot of meat on the bone. You're missing this. If you're playing Romeo, look for the, the, the bad side of Romeo. Don't look for the lover. You know, look for the bad side. Because although he's a lover, he also kills. You know, he kills Tybalt, he's slain. Yeah, but we, you know, all, so, we all need hobbies. <laughs> exactly, but I've been, what I am good at is the comedy stuff, and I've been doing Two Gentlemen of Verona, yeah. which Riley would love, because the dog, Crab, when does they see me, eave up my leg and make water against the gentlewoman's farthing gale? Does they ever see me do such a trick? And the dog gets him in trouble, he gets stuck in the stocks, and he, every time his dog does something on the floor, he gets the blame for it, which is really... Really lovely piece. I won't lie, it does freak me out when you suddenly go into these voices. You're like an impressionist, <laughs> aren't you? They lapse into these impressions, and yeah. that's what you do with your accent. You're not wrong, actually. I work with that John Coleshaw. Yeah. 
And every now and again, he'd just go into, oh, yes, I'm Freemish Slocum, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Bruno, wicked, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> when you're having a normal conversation. I mean, I think I think that's where I've been quite lucky with my acting, that I have gone into variety. Just what with Bobby Paul again. Lovely Bobby. Oh, right okay, on yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done a great thing now. He's moved from comedy to uh, acting. And he you has. used to see this. You did Max Wall a moment ago. He was a great straight actor. Lovely Les actor. Dawson, great straight Les actor. Dawson. Frankie Les Frankie Howard. Frankie could do it. Oh, it's a not dear. Tommy Cooper could do it. There's this line between comedy and tragedy, Love isn't it. there? And I don't know, like I said, Les, I always do the Les Dawson. I know it was a mother-in-law at the door. The mice would throw themselves on the traps. You see? I still love that one. It's this kind of stuff. <laughs> at the Deco, tomorrow afternoon. Yes. It's for a couple of hours. Who else is on the bill Well, with the you? lovely Clive Fletcher. You're lovely Clive. You're lovely Clive. I know Clive, you? yeah. You know, I've been rehearsing with Clive's yesterday. His brother Graham's going to be in it as well. Beautiful. Uh, who, who does some 60s songs. And Naomi Wilkins, who's a local girl, playing Tiger Lily in Peter Pan. So, so if that'd you've be got lovely. tomorrow afternoon free, it starts at one, and then if you want your afternoon tea, uh, that's in there as well. You can get tickets on the door tomorrow afternoon, or you can book them in advance on 01604 491 005. It's on the website as well, thedeco.co.uk, and check out their programme. They've got good stuff at the Deco. So uh, when do you go to Portsmouth? It's beautiful. Christmas in Pompey. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that will be nice. And the Portsmouth Theatre this year playing Wishy Washy. Yes, the Groundlings right. Theatre uh, with Richard Stride that was in Star Wars. Okay. Lovely, lovely guy, actually. Um, he's just got married to his partner, which is really nice. Very good. And he got married on stage there, so that'll be fun. So I'm off to Portsmouth in November. Good so I'm around in sunny Northampton, Hamilton Park, drinking my coffees, saying hello to all my lovely friends, and I love Northampton up the cobblers. <laughs> up your own. It's uh, <laughs> tomorrow from one till three. <laughs> Music Hall is at the Deco, people. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. I love you, mate. I do, honestly. You're great. <laughs>